All right, guys, welcome back. This is Dragosh, and I am back with another review. Now, if this is your first time on this channel, I am a European comedian originally from Romania, based in Berlin. You can actually watch some of my material here. And I do reviews, I comment, and I also analyze different types of comedy specials. Now, this comedy special that we're gonna look at today is Jim Jeffries sixth special called Bear. Now, what I'm gonna look at is I'm gonna look at the laughs per minute, I'm gonna look at the number of characters he creates in the particular show, I'm also gonna look at numbers of voice modulations, also uh, the amount of claps he gets, and I've also started looking a bit into depth at the length of the laughs. Now, I don't qualify them in terms of the actual length, but it's just like short laughs, long laughs, and I specifically take out the long left to see how many of those are there. And this is a bit arbitrary, these are not like uh, kind of the ultimate metrics, but they are metrics that for me as a comedian, they're very useful to know, right? Now, if you're just interested in the numbers, you can skip to the numbers at this particular uh, point in time, timestamp. But if you're interested in my opinion, then let's get into it. Right? I've particularly been a big fan of Jim Jeffries for quite a while, and I think this is the special that got me into him. Uh, Jim Jeffries actually was a UK-based comedian. He was originally from Australia, he moved from Australia to the UK to kind of join the circuit there, and he spent a lot of time in Manchester, which is, I also lived in Manchester for about four years. I don't think we ever overlapped, but he kind of cut his teeth in the British uh, comedy circuit. Uh, and he basically got famous because he got hit in the head with a bottle in 2007 up to the Manchester Comedy Store during a show. Now you might be thinking to yourself, why would someone hit this poor man in the head with a bottle? Well, Jim Jeffries' material is particularly um, prone to deal with controversial topic, let's say so, right? He has, over the time, been called misogynist, he has been called sexist, he has done jokes about abortion, he has done jokes berating religious people, uh, very funny jokes, might, might I add, and effectively his flavor of comedy has traditionally been based in shock for punchlines, right? Or saying things that are uh, wrong, things that you don't really hear, or uh, appealing to topics that normally you wouldn't speak of. By the way, very good in terms of like uh, structural joke writing. And while I haven't watched all of his early material, I've watched a couple of them, and I think the best way to describe some of his early material is basically a bit cynical. He has been a bit cynical in his earlier specials, and he has been focused heavily on male-dominated audiences. So his particular audience traditionally has been drunk men, I guess. Or is he's definitely qualified as a dirty comic. He has been qualified as a dirty comic for his first five specials and has obviously appealed more toward the lads. He's been more of a lads comedian, which is, you know, it's, it's basically, they need to be entertained as well, right? But what has happened is this particular special has, she was actually filmed in the US after he had Phil wrapped up his uh, series that he was filming at the time. He was the creator of a show called Legit, which basically is based on the story of him taking his paraplegic friend to a whorehouse. So then he had the whole show built around that. The show was really good, very high ratings overall. And uh, this is basically, this special is actually, if I'm not mistaken, one of his first specials where he gets rid of his older persona. His older persona is, again, the darker, cynical, controversial one. And this particular one, he kind of leans more into more fa family friendly. I, I wouldn't say family friendly, but leans more into joyous slash sexes, joyous, no, joyous. There's a bit more joy in this particular material than his previous ones, and he kind of leans into that together with this like kind of previous themes of like controversialness of like saying the wrong thing and so on and so forth and it worked out really well this special is very memorable and especially it's memorable because basically this is the this is the special where he has the bit that has made him i think overall famous everywhere it's the gun control bit it's about like 12 minutes of gun control material where he just makes really good argument points and he presents them in an extremely entertaining way. So entertaining that that particular clip went viral and it always goes viral when there's a mass shooting in the US, which is more often than you might think. Now, as a comedian looking at this particular special, I just gotta say I'm very impressed with how the the cadence, the flow of Jim Jeffries, man, he it's like he has developed a reflex to add punchlines as he speaks. He's an extremely good storyteller and he combines two elements. You know, he's a very good technical writer, but at the same time, he's an excellent storyteller, which is kind of difficult to kind of combine. He's basically, he is a Gaffigan type style writer combined with a Chappelle type story writer in, in one. So he manages to do long stories, but those long stories are very well peppered with jokes and punchlines uh, done in just very well technically technical way like there's contrast there's a misdirection and from what i understand in terms of research he does not actually write all of his stuff down it's just how his brain works in a couple of podcasts i've heard jim jeffries talk about how the difference between doing comedy in the u.s and the difference between doing comedy in the uk is in the u.s people are much more 
forgiving of comedy and bad jokes whereas in in the UK people are a lot more aggressive they have higher expectations so with him having kind of cut his teeth in the UK market I think that's kind of what's helped him develop this type of reflex of writing these particular jokes so naturally and another thing about Jim Jeffries is he is just a very interesting person he's lived a very interesting life he has uh, the ability to give you I think this is one of the most important thing about Jim Jeffries his gives you an insight it gives you a look into a world that you would not normally have access to a world of comedians basically trying to you know make most of make most of like whatever is left of the cocaine it gives you insight into his travels around the US it gives you a window into a world that you do not normally have access to and that's very interesting it's very interesting so it captivates the audience in a very unique way just kind of like hearing these stories it's kind of basically like you would be hanging out with your drunk buddy. That's kind of like the vibe that Jim Jeffries has. And he has all these crazy stories that he has done that you would probably never kind of see yourself doing, where you will feed off and you kind of live vicariously through that particular experience. I think that's the kind of the secret of Jim Jeffries, the, the ability to give you that kind of vicari vicarious living um, experience for his kind of uh, conquests. And, uh, and one other thing that I kind of, he talks about, he talks about like, anal sex, talks about like women having relationships, talks about Father's Day and how the only good thing about Father's Day, the only way that you can celebrate that is the, by him not having to spend money because for example now he has a child. And this is I think one of the reasons why this particular um, special maybe is a bit more mainstream and a bit more restrained in terms of the Jim Jeffries old style is because he has a child, he's a girlfriend, they moved in. I think he finally matured at the point of this special. He finally kind of, at the age of 37 by the way, if you're uh, wondering what, how old he is in this particular special. And the contrast that he kind of has in this particular special is he has very serious jokes and, and, and stories such as the gun control and he also talks about very opposite spectrum thing for like this gun control is such a responsible socially responsible thing to talk about but then he also talks about coming on women's faces and how that makes him feel great so it's, it's so many bits that are so kind of contrasting and knocking heads together that i think makes the special particularly interested uh, interesting and i love it it's really good i laughed out loud a couple of times uh, and I, you know, strongly recommend you watch it if you get the opportunity. If you like these type of reviews, drop me a subscribe, a comment, a like, and just to not uh, drag it on any further, let us move on to the numbers and see how those look in terms of laughs per minute. All right, so let us look at the actual numbers for Jim Jeffries. In terms of numbers, we have 352 laughs for the entire show. Uh, the entire show being 76 minutes, which which brings us at 4.63 in terms of last per minute, which is somewhere in the lower bracket of last per minute. However, he does kind of do quite long bits, and actually the gun control bit is about like 12, 13, 15 minutes. The length of the topics that he discusses comes up to an average of 5.8 out of 13 topics, as you can see here. And in terms of act outs, voice modulations, and character perspectives, we have a pretty I guess normal type of distribution. We have 20% and then 17% for the voice modulation, 99 characters, which actually 99 characters is more in the upper tier of character creation. He does use characters quite heavily for his particular jokes. And I also had a claps, which is about 19 claps for this show, which is about like 5% of the show. And another one that I've added is long laughs, which is 22 very long laughs, uh, which is 6%. Yeah, so in that context, it, uh, from the number perspective, it looks pretty... Um, again, it's a very long show. It does not feel like there's not enough jokes in it. It feels like there's a lot of jokes. It's very well spread out. And especially the the consistency for 76 minutes is extremely well. The other people that have had 76 minutes has been Richard Pryor. He also does 4.4, slightly lower. Who else has had a very long kind of... Tom Segura, I think, is the one that really manages to do well with last per minute and length. Yeah, that, I guess that's pretty much it. The, you know, usually the rule is the longer the show lasts, the less last, last per minute, with the exception of Tom Segura. All right, let's look at the graphs. All right, so looking at the graph, looking at the graphs, what we see is this is the pulse of the show. As you can see, it does go up to like seven. I think seven is the maximum he goes in terms of last per minute, and it's very spread out uh, in terms of distribution, right? Uh, in terms of 50, moment 59, moment 59, 29, and the first starting bits are his most hilarious. Uh, let's look and see which ones those are. In the first minutes, uh, what was the first minute? Minute two and three, we have stories about his girlfriend. Minute 29, we have the gun control bit. And minute 59, we have the TSA Australia bit. In terms of distribution of act outs and uh, voice modulations, as you can see, 
he uses characters very heavily. This is where the this is where the, the humor comes from in terms of Jim Jeffries' comedy. It's from the from the interaction with different characters that he has in the show. In terms of comparisons, let's move on to comparisons. I've put uh, Bill Burr here, Dave Chappelle, Louis C.K., Tom Segura, Sam Morrill, and Jim Jeffries, just so you guys get an idea of how it looks in terms of the big leagues, right? So as you can see, Jim Jeffries is in the lower tier, right next to Chappelle. Uh, again, more story-oriented. And then we have all these other guys that are much less story focused, more technical, uh, riding high here. Then in the very different looking graph, we have Jim Jeffries versus Richard Pryor, Mark Norman, Eddie Murphy, and Chris Rock. And I wanted to put Eddie Murphy here because I've heard Jim Jeffries talk about several times about his, uh, that, that Eddie Murphy was his inspiration, right? So as you can see, you have Jim Jeffries, the blue line, and then Eddie Murphy is the green one. So. Similar cadence actually, maybe this is where you can see the influence. A similar cadence, they both start off strong and they go down uh, in terms of LPMs. But I do think that Jim Jeffries is a bit, I mean, of course, Jim Jeffries is much older at this point as well. So, you know, Eddie Murphy was what, 20, 20 when uh, Deliveries came out. And then, you know, I see Chris Rock as well is the only one that kind of goes up in terms of LPM, starts off slow and then goes up even strong towards the end. Uh, and then Mark Norman, pretty much being a very technical writing, stays consistent and above. See, you can see that the technicals usually tend to be higher in terms of LPMs, whereas story is a bit lower, right? But that is all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this particular analysis and review of Jim Jeffries Spare. If you guys do enjoy it, please say so. Leave me a review, uh, leave me a comment, subscribe, and let me know what other specials I should look at. And while you're here, also check out some of my original comedy here. Well, thank you very much for taking the time and tune in for my next review, which most likely will be Carlin. Thank you and see you next time.